Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at a new project that we're going to call Fundamentals Demo. This video is part of a larger series of videos that focuses on the fundamentals of the Java programming language and how to do things like create a command line application and utilize the arguments that are passed to it. This video assumes a couple of things. First, that you have already downloaded and installed a version of NetBeans. In this case, I have 12.6. You shouldn't be tied to that. You can use a newer version or even possibly a slightly older version. And it also assumes that you have installed a newer version of the JDK. Now, I'll be using something in the 18 series for this demonstration. However, you can also use something newer or potentially slightly older so once again, you want to make sure that you are not using anything that is too old. And so to begin with, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and create a new project. We are going to be using Java with Ant. Apache Ant is a build manager. It's a relatively old build manager. However, though, we want to keep this particular series relatively straightforward. And we'll take a look at other build managers later. We're going to go ahead and select a Java application and then select next. And then you wanna take some time to familiarize yourself with your file system structure. In this case, I'd like to go ahead and put my project under a subfolder called EE333 projects. This video is going to be targeting the EE333 course. However, you can use it for other, uh, other projects or other courses as well. And so we want to go ahead and select a viable project name. In this case, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to call this one Fundamentals Demo. And you'll notice a couple of things that NetBeans is going ahead and creating our subfolder for us in our projects folder, as well as creating this main class. Now, by default, it creates the main class name, the same as the project name. And we'll leave that part alone, but we are going to change this prefix. This prefix essentially corresponds to the package name. We'll talk more about packages, but fundamentally what it does is it allows for us to group our code into various packages, then for code reuse later on in other projects. Now, we're going to keep the same naming scheme for our folder and for our packages, and I'm going to target now our EE333, but again, it does not have to be specific to EE333. You can use this for other courses. I would also recommend considering using a package name that is more representative of what you're working on. For instance, we could call this fundamentals, and then we would have fundamentals dot fundamentals demo or even fundamentals dot demo, or you could simply just use your initials. But either way, go ahead and change the package name to something a little easier to navigate. You'll see why in just a little bit, and then select finish. And you should now have an additional project in your project tree. And under the source packages, you should see EE333. And you should see your fundamentals demo.java, which is the default file name, once again, based off the project name. And you'll notice that it has a little green triangle there that indicates that this will be runnable and that it contains a main class. Much like in C, we want to stick with a singular main class in our projects to begin with, because we need to know the entry point of our application. Now, the file that has popped up in your editor is the result of a template that you can change as well as the license, and that means gives you some instructions on how and where to do that. Uh, I would encourage you to look into that, but for right now, go ahead and delete these comments. You'll notice again that there is the package EE333. And as I specified earlier, it does not necessarily matter that it is EE333. But for the purposes of this video, the series of videos rather, and then for future videos, we're going to keep the EE333 package. You'll also notice a comment block that looks very similar to what you probably ran into in your C programming course, as well as other languages. It's basically just a multi-line comment. The template, of course, takes your username from your computer and inserts it into the block to provide then the authorship information. We can take a look at other 
features that we can use in the template or even manually add later when we start looking at documentation. You should also have a public class that is again the same as the file name as well as the project name just by default. But in this case, it will be our fundamentals demo. And then another comment block that includes some details about the parameters that are being passed to our main function. You'll notice here that it is public static void main. That is the entry point of our application, much like what we would have encountered in our C programming, with the main difference being that in Java, you have a single argument that represents all of the command line arguments, whereas in C, you were passed the array of arguments as well as a count of the number of arguments. You'll see in just a second how we're actually going to be able to pull that out of this string array that is being passed to main. And then additionally, you see that there's a single line comment Again, very similar to what you would have seen in C if you had worked with that. So the purposes of this video is just to get us a little bit of familiarity with our environment and then to also create a command line application and simply prove that we can actually pass command line arguments to it. This is going to be very important in our development process, but also in our testing process for later projects. So it's very important that you get this set up and understand then how this works. We're going to downplay the use of objects in this particular video. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this public static, or more specifically, these static functions. Static functions essentially will behave a lot like your functions in C, and you can think of them as being just procedural functions then that we're going to use. In other words, no instance of an object must be created. So to begin with, what we want to do is much like in C, we want to declare a variable that we can use to iterate through our arguments array. Um, in this case, it's going to be exactly the same approach. We're going to start off with an int. We're going to call it index. We will not initialize it because we're actually going to use a for loop. This is going to be an example of a Java primitive. This is not, again, going to be a class or an object. And then what we want to do is we simply want to print out then the number of arguments that we are passing to our executable. And if you were in C, for instance, what you would do is you would do a print F. Well, it's a little bit different in Java. What we're going to do is we're going to leverage another static function, this time though in another location in the Java framework. The Java language also corresponds, or rather Java corresponds to two things. One is the language, the other is the framework. And what we're going to do is we're going to leverage the different functions in the Java framework to do certain things. And in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to leverage in our system.out package, our print ln, or print with a new line attached to it. And we're simply going to pass to it a string or a rather well-crafted string that specifies the args and the length. And notice that this is in double quotes, so it's going to print it exactly as I have it written. And then we use the plus sign to concatenate things that we wish to print in the same line. And in this case, it's going to be our args.length. Now, we also want to, in addition, print out not only the total number of arguments, but we want to print out each one of the arguments, which is going to require us to have a for loop, much like you might have seen in your C programming language course. So we start off with a for loop. We initialize that for loop to zero. Java, again, is a zero-based language. And we want to continue the for loop up to, but not including whatever the args dot length is. And then we want to increment it by one. So it's going to be index plus plus. And then again, we want to simply print out whatever that argument is using the static function print ln. So system dot out dot print line. And then we once again, we'll have to spend a little bit of time crafting a nice 
neat string to be able to print out. And in this case, what we're going to do is just simply have our args, square brackets, and then we want to add to that the value of the index variable. And yes, it is an integer, but by doing it this way, it gets converted over to a string. So in this case, it's going to be square args, square brackets, index, and then open quotes again, or another set of quotes close brackets and a colon. Once again, this is just for aesthetics. And then we want to print out the specific command line argument. In this case, what it's going to be is args, square brackets, then index. And again, you should feel relatively comfortable with this if you've worked with C or C++, because this is going to be a very, very similar syntax. Now, at this point, what you can do is you can go ahead and save it, although it will automatically get saved when you build it. And you've got two choices of how to build it. You can right click on the project and select build, or you can select the little hammer. I prefer to go ahead and right click on the project and go ahead and build it. And then let's see here, I may have accidentally closed my output window here. So we'll go, there we go. And so you should see build success. And now what you wanna do is open a command line, which I have already done. And I have changed directory over to my EE333 projects. If I type in DIR, you'll see now I have a fundamentals demo directory. I will simply CD into the fundamentals demo. Once again, do a DIR. You can also, if you're on Windows, you can just type Explorer followed by a period, and you will also get the graphical equivalent. So it's nice to sort of see the project structure both in Explorer or in your file Explorer, as well as from the command line. And you can take some hints from what it's trying to do in your output window to know where to look in the project for your output of your compile or your build. And so if you take a look in your build and in your classes folder, there is an EE333 subfolder. And then ultimately the result of a Java build will be a dot class file. And what we're going to see is that will be runnable using then the Java from the command line. And so once again, we'll notice that it's fundamentals demo, build, classes, and what we want to do is we want to CD now to this classes folder. And so let's again do a DIR CD to our build folder. And then CD into the classes folder. And you'll see there is the same EE333 folder that corresponds to the package. And hopefully now you can start to understand why the package will help us organize our code as well as organize our output from our build. And so the class file sits in a package folder. And so this will make a little more sense as we get more familiar with it. But then what we wanna to do to go ahead and run our binary here that has been generated, if we run Java and then space dash version, this will simply confirm that we have our Java environment installed correctly. You'll see in this case, I have 18.0.2.1. You may have a different version. As a matter of fact, you probably will, but that will be the version of Java that I'll be using to run our applications. And so what you want to do is very carefully now use the folder name or the package name and then inside, you can sort of get a hint here of what the class name is you're trying to run by looking at the dot class file. Or you can go back to the project and recognize that you're trying to run the fundamentals demo and specifically your main inside of the fundamentals demo. And the way to do this is you just simply specify EE333 and then dot fundamentals demo. Now, this probably seems a little complicated at this point, and it's okay. It'll get easier. But for right now, just want to recognize the package corresponds to the folder and the class that your main in corresponds to 
the class that you want to run from the command line. At this point, we'll hit enter, and you'll see that you should get back args.length colon and zero because we passed no arguments to the Java runtime. And this is a little bit different than what you've experienced in the C programming language if you've worked from the command line. You'll know that the executable is our zeroth argument. Well, in Java, that's not the case. And so we don't actually know what the executable is or the main class that we are running, at least not from the command line. There are ways to do that, but we won't cover that in this video. Instead, what we want to do is then try to add something. In this case, I'm literally going to pass the word something as an argument. And sure enough, you see that our args.length is one and args square bracket zero colon followed by the argument itself. Notice that I have a minor little typo there. We will have to keep track of our spaces ourselves with the use of the print line. I'm gonna go ahead and take this as an opportunity then to build our project one more time. Again, we have success. We simply go back here to the command line and then rerun it. And you'll see that I've improved the aesthetics of our output. We can go ahead and follow this up now with something else. And you'll see that now the number should jump to three. That probably was not what I had in mind. And instead, what I probably wanted to do was to go ahead and put double quotes around something else. And so now that allows for you to pass spaces in an argument. So hopefully you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And thank you for watching.